What's up guys, it's your boy Damone and welcome back to another Genshin Impact video. Hopefully you guys had a wonderful, wonderful, happy Halloween uh, for those of you guys who celebrate Halloween. And if you don't celebrate Halloween, I hope you just had a good time today, guys. One of the biggest questions I've gotten as of late is how to unstuck yourself. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like a lot of times, like I get it, the excitement that you're going into the game. You made a ton of mistakes. You've seen all the videos and the mistakes that you shouldn't have made, but you made them right now how do you recenter yourself how do you get yourself out of that position and how do you adjust and get yourself back on track without feeling like you have to start all the way over now what i'm explaining to you guys today is going to apply to anybody so it doesn't matter if you're free to play pay to win whether you got 50 characters whether you built 100 characters or whatever a little bit of, of my background uh, i've been playing this game since february i've been in every closed beta test except for the recent pioneer test uh, just due to me leaking 1.1 information when i wasn't supposed to <laughs> but that's neither here nor there uh but we're talking about uh getting out of the situation and in those uh previous betas like when i got into closed beta test 2 in march i put myself in a situation where i built way too many characters i was testing literally everybody i was leveling up kaya i was leveling up amber pretty much any new character that i got i basically leveled them up and then i put them to the test so i can see exactly what they can do and damn Klee talks a lot so now what happens when you get yourself in that situation either you built too many characters or you didn't really understand the gearing process or you didn't really understand what you should or shouldn't do and now you had that aha moment and you're ready to make some adjustments where do you start well the first thing is going to be guys is just to take a deep deep breath all right because the reality of it is is no matter where you're at no matter how you messed up or think you messed up or how hard you pushed or didn't push we're all headed to the same place with Genshin Impact and that my friends is bankruptcy <laughs> no, but what I mean by that is we're all going to head to Adventure Rank 60. You're all going to try and pull the characters that you want. You're all going to eventually have all the characters that you want built, so on and so forth. If you're free to play, it just might take a little bit longer than if you're pay to win. Pay to win, obviously, we're paying for progress, so we're going to get things a little bit quicker. But for my free to play peeps, it's just it's going to feel like it hits you harder just because you have even more of a time limit. But even if you have a time limit, it'll help you out just because, A, you just need to take a breath and then return to the fundamentals because uh, it's easy to get caught up in this game and feel like you have to have like every single character in the game built because you see so many guides and stuff on YouTube of characters that are OP not OP so on and so forth and it can get a little confusing when you start to really get into tier list and then tier list make you feel like maybe a character that you really really like that you started to build isn't as good as let's say another character so then you start building other stuff and then before you know it you built like 52 heroes so what I advise doing is just going back to the basics. So what I mean by the basics is this. When you look at your characters, the question you're gonna ask yourself is what is your primary team? All right, so really just back to the fundamentals. So if you got started with Deluke or if you got started with Lisa or Chi Chi or whoever you got started with, start to look at the character and what they pair well with. All right, because uh, chances are the initial team that you were working on was fine. It just maybe needed one or two adjustments and then you were good. Uh, but you might have like went off on a tangent and started just trying a whole bunch of stuff and then found yourself out of resources. Don't worry, <laughs> you'll end up out of resources anyway, no matter how effective uh, of a process you have it. But when you're trying to get yourself back, especially for my peeps over Adventure Rank 40, is again, you just kind of dial back into your original team. So for the sake of example, I try to keep this kind of semi free to play. So let's see my team was Shingling, right? Super popular. Let's say I was running with Faisal. Let's say I ran Barbara and Chung Yoon, right? All fair characters, you guys can pull these. Maybe I've pulled them, maybe I haven't pulled them. Not obviously the superest of free to play, but definitely accessible. So let's say this is my primary team and I got back to this and this is just, you know, what the team is that I was working on. I'm gonna go back and I'm just gonna start focusing on their gear one at a time. Now, the reason why I say one at a time is yes, are some characters gonna use different gear? Like, are you probably gonna use electro bonus damage for Faisal? Probably. Are you gonna be using maybe physical damage or pyro bonus damage for Cheng Ling? Probably. But with that, it's just going back to the basics, understanding what gear, what stats that you're looking for, you know, looking for the crit rate, the crit damage, the attack percent, um, and really just dialing in your gear. And what helps is, and this is a strategy that I like to use when I'm doing gear, is let's say I'm farming for a particular gear set. And I found that this is really, really helpful. I try to go for a five set, even if the gear doesn't have a five set, because what this does is it gives me a little bit of flexibility. Now, what I mean by that is, let's say you notice that my venti is on five viridescent, but this could be anything. Thing. five berserker five gladiator five whatever right so let's say we're on five of one piece of gear and then i happen to get a better piece of gear that replaces let's say my flower then i can replace my flower take this flower 
for example, and then put it on another character, maybe of the same element that I'm also working on. And then if they have gear, I can just kind of hand that down. Uh, what this does is it allows me to really consolidate my time and my efforts and my resources. So technically, I'm only building one character. But as I continue to make that one character really, really good or better than they used to be, then I can also continue to build my characters. Now, granted, this isn't as effective, let's say, with Viridescent <laughs> if you're trying to build like a fire hero or something like that. But if you're using basic gear like Gladiator, Noblesse Oblige, you know, stuff that can apply to multiple characters, this is an effective strategy that you can imply to your toolkit to help you progress after you guys understand that and really have a firm grasp on you know okay I need crit rate crit damage you know elemental mastery energy recharge or whatever whatever for your characters then it's just basically just going down the line and getting your one team unlocked to be honest I would say that for free-to-play players your primary focus really is the first eight floors of abyss because 9 through 12 doesn't mean anything other than the brass tack on the shirt because the primo gems, I mean, you ain't really missing much at 150 primo gems a floor, <laughs> right? Uh, even though they do reset and like, so don't feel like you're stressed or forced to have to put that abyss team together right away because if you can get that initial eight floor clear at three stars each, that's 2,400 crystals for you right out the gate that can help you out. And it's less stressful on you because then you can focus on the important things like keeping your team together. Does that make sense? So once you guys have locked in and kind of win Went back to the basics and you guys have gotten your you know you know team of four back together then the question that you need to ask yourself is this because the mentality after adventure rank 40 is completely different when you guys are you know running around you guys are AR 20 25 and you guys are just killing stuff and you're feeling like oh I'm the best person in the world this game is so easy it's so oh, oh I'm the best right and then you get to AR 40 or AR 45 and you get humbled really really quick and that's supposed to happen but that's <laughs> once you get to that point it, you have to it's got to be more of a mind frame shift because now it's no longer okay I'm gonna level up as fast as I can it's more like okay I need to look at my economy and I need to look at the resources and materials that I need to put myself back in a forward moving position instead of just trying to move laterally and keep swapping gear to other characters and you know saying oh maybe it's the characters that I built because it's not necessarily the characters that you built that is your kind of lack of progress it's just um, kind of spreading your focus too thin so the question that I like to ask myself is if I'm feeling super duper overwhelmed is I look at things like the domains, right? And I try to schedule this because we have a limited amount of energy every day. So I try to set this up to where, okay, let's say I just hit AR 40, I'm out of mats, right? Maybe I have Mora, maybe I don't, maybe I need artifact fodder, maybe I don't. Once I hit 40, if I need artifact fodder, I'm gonna start farming domains so I can get spare artifacts. And then if I get lucky and get a five star piece of gear, then I'll have the artifacts to do so. If I do not have the Mora and I don't also have the artifacts, then I'm still gonna get the artifacts. And then I'll maybe set up a day like on a Sunday or something like that where I can just go hit up like ley lines, right? So then let's say, you know, I'm over AR 40 and I'm just gonna go hit up this Mora thing all day. This is where all my energy is going. They just gave us a bunch of free resin for the Klee event. And obviously from future events, they'll probably give us more, but then I'll partition a day or two to just do these to stack up my resources until they provide other ways to do so. Same thing is gonna apply to character XP. Typically speaking, if I'm doing character XP, I like to wait until I'm 40 plus to do these. But I mean, if you gotta do them beforehand, you gotta do what you gotta do. But with these, I try to set it up on like a Sunday where I don't really have any other obligations and it's pretty much the free day that I need to get the resources and stuff that are going to help propel me forward. Once I start to do that, what that's going to allow me to do is get a flow. So like, let's say during the week, I'm farming domains to get as much artifacts as I can so I can get my characters right and structuring my team or primary heroes that I'm working on. And then on the weekend, specifically Sunday, then I'm doing resources. If I need to do extra days for Mora or gold or whatever uh, character XP, then I will just do that. Um, but, it, but it's not such a big deal to sacrifice a resource or talent book or whatever, because again, we're all heading to the same destination at the end anyway, which is bankruptcy. <laughs> All right. So that's I, I think this is like some of the biggest things uh, that you guys can do uh, really is we have a tendency. I did this myself to just really overcomplicate the process and then start to compare myself to other players or other, you know, YouTube videos and stuff like that and see all the progress or success people are having. And then look at my kid and feel like, oh, you know, I got to build this hero, or that hero, because, you know, I've seen them working. But the reality is, is you don't. Um, you just have to get back and understand the problems or symptoms of other problems, because if you're having an issue now, let's say you're not really understanding how to gear your characters or you're spreading yourself 
yourself too thin and you try to bounce to somewhere else thinking that it'll be a quick solution, you'll just find yourself in the same situation until you fix the root cause, which is, again, just being a little bit uh, spread too thin. So again, just take a deep breath, kind of zero in on your initial team. And then when you need to supplement more characters, like I said, utilize the strategy that I talked about where you just build one character and then as you get hand-me-down gear, just hand that gear over so that we are always making one character the best that it can be and then the second best gear is going to your next character and then eventually it'll get to the point where all of your characters are just super dope and then at that point then you'll start looking at building other teams instead of just individual heroes themselves so anyway guys uh, i really wanted to talk about this today because you know the big patch is getting ready to come out and I know a lot of you guys probably spend your wills trying to figure out how you're going to recover from whatever fatal mistake you, <laughs> you perceive happen. Uh, but honestly, guys, it's no big deal, right? It's just going to take a little bit of time, a little bit of focus effort, and you can get all the things that you want. So with that being said, guys, that's all I wanted to cover today. If you guys got any questions, comments, concerns, uh, definitely let me know in the comment box below. And I'd be happy to assist. And uh, with that being said, we will see you guys in the next video. Peace.